What if I told you that you could avoid 90% of the most common mistakes in IELTS writing after watching this video? Sounds hard to believe, right? For this video, I asked a former IELTS examiner to share his experience with us, and almost all the mistakes he mentioned can be avoided if you know what they are. It's Asia. Let's get started. When I had that conversation with a friend of mine who used to be an IELTS examiner, he said that very often someone who obviously could write well in English, in fact, scored badly simply because they had no idea what they were supposed to do. IELTS writing is a tricky section. The first mistake is not studying the band descriptors, which list all the requirements used to mark your answers. You can download them for free at IELTS.org. Not reading them very carefully is a big mistake because they give a very good idea of what we have to do and what the examiner is looking for. Going back to the task descriptors, in both tasks, reading band 5, the format may be inappropriate in places. What this means is that the essays you're asked to write in IELTS are precisely that – essays. They are not notes or reports that can include number sections or bullet points. For example, you can't include something like this. Instead, you need to write an essay divided into paragraphs. And not a number of small paragraphs, but four or five paragraphs with several sentences in each. Usually four, like in this sample essay. Keep in mind that Academic IELTS is used as a measure of your ability to successfully study in English. General training measures your ability to successfully function in an English-speaking environment and for that reason includes not only formal English but also less formal, such as task 1 letters where you are writing to colleagues or friends. Indeed, your level of formality is important, which leads us to another mistake we might make – using the wrong tone. In task 2, no matter the IELTS version you are taking, keep it formal. Avoid slang and informal words like a bunch of folks, say a number of, and people. Similarly, avoid idioms. To call the shots or to pocket the dough are just two examples. They are very informal. Say, to make decisions, to receive the revenue. Here is an example of formal writing perfect for your task to essay. Some of the most common reasons for self-employment are the income and lifestyle that it may provide. Unlike employees, whose responsibilities and income are determined by their employers. People who work for themselves are free to implement their ideas as quickly as they can, and they receive all the revenue. Here we use formal and neutral words and more formal grammar. The wrong tone is most noticeable in general training task 1. If you're asked to write a letter of complaint to the manager of a store where you received bad service, you must write formally. So don't start off with, I'm not happy with that microwave oven I got from your place the other day. Try something like, I am writing with regard to an item I purchased at your store in North Street on Saturday the 5th of May. But an informal style is perfect if you're writing a letter to an old friend. I've been meaning to get in touch for ages, but life here has been a bit hectic. I'm on the go from morning to night. In IELTS writing, how you respond to the task is important. What the examiner is looking for is clarity. How well can you develop your answer to the task? and at the same time make your point of view clear. One fundamental mistake is therefore not making your position clear. 
I think this should be a vital part of your IELTS preparation. The most common essay types, the discuss both views and give your own opinion, and the to what extent do you agree, directly ask for your opinion. The best advice is to state your point of view in the opening paragraph, just after outlining the essay question. Let's take this topic as an example. Once children start school, teachers become a more important influence on children's intellectual and social development than parents. To what extent do you agree or disagree? Let me show you an introduction with a clear position or opinion. It has been said that teachers, rather than parents, have a greater impact on how young children develop conceptual and social skills. In this essay, I shall argue that although teachers do play an important role, I strongly believe that a great deal of learning also occurs at home. Here, my opinion is clear from the beginning, but it's not extreme. Rather, I have a balanced opinion. Here is a funny thing. It doesn't matter what your opinion is as long as you have one. The examiner is only interested in how you develop your answer. And this includes, of course, explanations and examples. If you're Amy High, and I know you are, don't make the mistake of not developing ideas with good examples. By good, I mean not only relevant to the topic, but also using examples that are part of your experience and knowledge. They're always more convincing and genuine than, let's say, examples taken from surveys or academic studies. Compare this. In our family, we were encouraged to talk about our school day with our parents, and they were always around to help out with our homework. Or, a recent survey published in the United States concluded that only 23% of parents help their children with homework. I know it may be tempting to invent some research to prove your point. But from examiner's point of view, the first example is stronger. My advice is to generally avoid fake statistics. In my courses, you can learn how to write each answer sentence by sentence, how to develop your ideas, express your opinion, and meet all the requirements. If you're interested, you can check them out in the description. Okay, what can go wrong during the test? Here, there are two main issues where candidates can make mistakes. And the first is bad planning and timing. One test, two tasks, 60 minutes. It even says on the question sheet, spend not more than 20 minutes on task one. But let's be honest, for the vast majority of us, writing 150 words in just 20 minutes and then over 250 words in the next 40 minutes is tough. And this includes planning both tasks before writing, because without a plan, you are unlikely to get a high score for your task response and coherence or organization of your answer. And you should always spare a minute or two at the end to check over what you've written to correct any silly mistakes. What often happens in the test is that test takers spend too much time on task one and then they're pushed to finish task two, which inevitably pulls their score down. Don't make this mistake. Practice writing in time conditions and make sure to leave enough time for both tasks. And remember that you can do your task two first and then answer your task one. My friend ex-examiner shared with me that he used to see a lot of mistakes in essay structure. Often students only write three paragraphs, for example, essays with no conclusion, or only one body paragraph, and the idea is to write four. The introduction followed by two body paragraphs and a conclusion. Many times, paragraphs are too long and include too much information. This is also a mistake. Remember that each paragraph 
should start off with the main idea, followed by supporting points and examples. Oh yes, and don't make the mistake of not leaving clear spaces between your paragraphs. For example, in this essay, paragraphs are not obvious. It looks like one long text. You can leave spaces by indenting, which is starting the first line of the paragraph further from the margin. You can also leave a blank line between paragraphs. There are some other mistakes that are worth mentioning. And the first is how we connect ideas within sentences and between paragraphs. And that's the second task requirement, coherence and cohesion. Some of us love using connectors whenever we get a chance. Some don't use them much at all, but both are mistakes. Try to find a balance. There is no need to use them in every sentence. Let me show you an example. So please pause the video and read it. Do you like it? It's over the top, an excessive number of connectors. I counted seven. But don't leave them to a bare minimum either. In this version, it's up to us readers to supply all the connectors between the parts. Connectors should be there to help the reader see where you're going. So here is the best version. I've cut linking words from seven to four, enough to make my points clear and to help the examiner easily follow my argument. Another mistake concerns vocabulary, and I'm calling this vocabulary choice copied or borrowed. Don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about cheating in your test. When I say copying, I mean using words and phrases from your question in your answer, especially in the opening paragraph. Instead of paraphrasing, using synonyms, using your own words, you know, until quite recently, examiners were instructed to subtract any copied phrases from the total word count. So that was in the days when you could be penalized for not writing at least 250 words. So you can imagine that from time to time it meant a point less in task response. Bad news. So don't start with something like, in this essay I shall discuss how once children start school teachers become a more important influence on children's intellectual and social development than parents. Find your own words. In this essay, I shall compare the relative effect of both educators and parents on academic and social development in young school children in the belief that it is the classroom that has greater impact and borrowing the examiners do notice when a test taker uses what could be called memorized phrases, especially overused and old-fashioned phrases. Let's have a look at one example. People say that education begins at home. Education begins at home is a set phrase, and if you use it in your essay, it may be seen as memorized. Be careful even when you're quoting someone. Uh, for example, the famous one child, one book, one teacher, one pen can change the world from the speech given by Malala Yousafzai. It's beautifully said, but it's not us who said it. So paraphrase it. A teacher can have a positive lasting effect on a child, even with a minimum of resources. What else should you learn before your exam? Well, question types in task one and task two. If you're not absolutely clear about the types of questions you may get in your exam, there is a good chance that you won't answer the question fully. Take, for example, the discuss both views and give your own opinion type. You cannot only look at one side of the argument. If you do, you're probably heading for a band five in task response. In my courses, we'll work through all the question types and study how to answer each of them, meeting all the requirements so you could achieve a higher score. And these courses are linked in the description. 
And if you'd like to find out what mistakes annoy IELTS examiners most in IELTS speaking section, check out this video. And thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!